Yeah. <laughs> it just, it makes me think of the lack of glove. <laughs> the gym kicker. Yeah. Oh, gosh. If he wasn't already, now he is definitely having a terrible day. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. See that? Poor ammo management. But look what's going on around you. They get her underground, they will lose her for good. We'll lead the rescue too. That's not gonna happen, John. This game looks really good. Like, I know kind of year over year they work hard to get the, make the graphics better and everything. It looks bad. So I have not played this game, by the way. Are you telling me we leave her? I'm telling you I can't help you. Disobeying a direct order given to you by like an officer or even down low at like the non-commissioned officer NCO level, there'd be some kind of punitive action to that, depending on the situation entirely. You know, if it's your downrange in a war zone, it could be a lot more severe. I personally don't know anybody or, or have any any personal stories about being downrange and, and disobeying orders. I imagine you'd just be yourself over. Hey! Nice. So you see that antenna that is hanging off the side of her shoulder there. Just a, a real quick kind of funny story and how I can tell which comms gear is going to work well for me or not. I had a, uh, a combat instructor in a thing we have to do in the Marine Corps called a Marine Combat Training or School of Infantry. Uh, depending on your job, our comms guy, comms like instructor, getting us familiar with all that equipment and everything. And he said, yeah, these whip antennas, you never want them if they look brand new. Uh, so, I mean, you can't really tell by looking at hers but the the big whip antennas you can kind of coil around over themselves you kind of want one with some some salt to it some you know bends maybe a couple cracks you know function test it first make sure but the ones that look brand new everybody figures out they got problems with them so they put them back so you want the dirty old looking ones because you know those have been used over and over and over again so they're probably work really reliably I knew I always wanted uh, antennas that look broken but most of the times those are the only ones that would actually work <laughs> Pick. Ready to go. So that ratchet strap looking kind of setup that they have directly in front of them, a lot of times those will be used to A, keep people in, you know, you're secured to the helicopter in other ways, but also to kind of lean that gun down on, get a little bit more reliable of a shot, because I feel like we're about to see how difficult it is to uh, shoot things from a moving helicopter doing a pretty good job of that so far engaging those guys from <laughs> up in the in the overhead from a helicopter that is pretty difficult to do trying to take out the guys with guns pointed back towards him first dang <laughs> yeah Boots is down. in this situation in a another vehicle especially if that contact coming up has something like that RPG or whichever model rocket launcher that was to be able to get that way out of your way. Oh. Yeah. Oh, gosh. If he wasn't already, now he is definitely having a terrible day. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is there a blue dot on that handgun? God, <laughs> you just... Oh, man. <laughs> this is so bad. You have to get blue. Yeah, no way. Uh-oh. Yeah, you can have yourself a high-end brush guard on the front of that truck, but just taking like a head-on collision with that semi, <laughs> I think he'd have a little bit more damage done to him there. <laughs> oh, they're throwing landmines out onto the road. Oh, that's messed up. Time to switch to that other truck. You just pass him. Good to see you in one piece. <laughs> Grenade launcher. <laughs> I understand the urgency in being on the move, but Sweet God, man, I'm <laughs> just jumping from car to car. Guys, hit with the load shot. Yeah, it looks like they have some 
MRAPs that they fashioned into their own kind of vehicles, that, that's where it would start getting pretty difficult to take one down with uh, one of these 40 mic mics. But that is a, a very impressive round. I imagine he's shooting some, some HEDP rounds at it. So, I mean, your best bet would honestly be to try to shoot and get the round to detonate under it because a lot of that vehicle is pretty heavily up armored. But, I mean, it's, it's not going to just bounce off and do nothing with a, a properly placed HEDP round. Yeah, these pickup truck, I don't see them surviving more than one round out of that grenade launcher, so. There he goes jumping into another truck. Yeah, maybe it would have done him better to keep his eyes on the road for that one. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this is a pretty bad situation to be in. I know I've said that a lot. It just seems like this guy's just having a tough day. These armored personnel carriers, APCs that they're talking about, are for one man in a pickup truck is a tremendous ask to just say, hey, you know, uh, figure it out. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily be standing on top of the tallest point around just because I'd be doing what uh, we call skylining yourself because if I was an enemy turned around trying to look down and in between the trucks, you know, that would provide me with a better place to hide overall than having my entire body sticking up from the highest point around so there'd just be nothing but blue sky behind me and make you pretty easy. <laughs> oh, look at that. Dang. She black belt? That's some jujitsu stuff there, almost as like a modified, uh, like crucifix choke, almost like a bow and arrow a little bit. As an interrogator, I imagine there is all sorts of crazy training you gotta go through. The SEER guys, the survival, evasion, resistance, and escape school, you know, that's kind of counter interrogation is, is a portion of it. I can tell you with confidence, I it's probably, I don't know any interrogators. I, I was never in that world other than, you know, uh, detaining prisoners of war. At the end of the day, that's not even necessarily close to interrogating. That's probably a, uh, a government intelligence thing uh, for the most part you know uh, to my knowledge right now like the uh, what people would refer to as like the big army or the big navy big marine corps just your average you know guy you see on the street in uniform probably doesn't have a large field for just interrogators i imagine it being a, a highly specialized very professional and and small group of people that get to do that <laughs> so, so like ghost always i love him in these games because he's just in the corner just looking just menacing i don't know <laughs> that guy is just tough looking he's a good character i love these cutscenes in these games because it i mean it's one of the reasons call of duty has been around so long and i think why they're really not gonna go anywhere these guys have it down to tell a story what they're doing right now is what's called VBSS, Visit Board Search and Seizure. It's something commonly found by some like cool Navy cats, I think SEALs and things like that. Marine Force Recon's another one. It's a, it's not something that you're getting trained on day one. The training pipeline to be, you know, a real cool guy like them. Very kind of difficult skill set to acquire. It is pretty fun to see, so should be a good one. I want full containment. So it looks like we've got two kind of fire team element size teams conducting this BBSS, the CQB, and then our main character here just kind of running around doing his own thing, which hurts the realistic points quite a bit. You'd almost never, I, I'd even be willing to say definitively, you won't have just one guy doing whatever while you've got two other teams that are synchronized and, you know, conducting VBSS through this uh, oil rig that we see here. Uh, these guys are moving on uh, what we'd classify as an industrial stairway, which is a little bit more difficult to get up because you're completely exposed so i would definitely want everyone on the same page at this point in time in the mission <laughs> and uh not have our uh, our main character here just be on his own time your gear is going to be as waterproof as you can make it so when you see there's a couple of them i believe that have uh, packs on everything would be properly stowed in in waterproof bag a lot of times since it's you know mission dependent and these guys are probably showing up to this oil rig uh conducting their bbss getting their whatever is asked of them done and then probably getting on a boat and going back they probably had the foresight 
site to not bring anything with them that could get, you know, ruined by water or what have you. And if they had tools or anything else that they would absolutely need to get this mission done, it would be waterproof correctly. Yeah, the really the only like extra stuff maybe bring here would be some you know, goggles, something to keep the rain out of my eyes, keep the, the weather from messing with conducting the mission, really. Yeah, it seems like some kind of AR-10. That recoil and the sound of the round coming out of the can is a little bit heavy for just a standard AR and 5.56. Yeah, vectors are so fun in full auto. Semi-auto versions, it's it's fine. It's not the same, but those full auto vectors are just a ball, man. Let's have ourselves a gunfight. Yeah. <laughs> it just it makes me think of the lack of glove. <laughs> the gym kicker. No, no, no. Yeah. See that? Poor ammo management. But look what's going on around you. You're crazy if you think that you wouldn't be so stressed out in this situation that you'd have an exact hold on how much ammo is in a mag. Ammo is very important to consider when going into really any sort of mission. And my answer is the best amount of ammo to carry is as much as you can comfortably. Ammo weighs a lot uh, when you start kind of compiling it. I was a machine gunner and then assistant machine gunner and team leader for a while. So I was required to carry a couple linked belts of ammo in ammo cans on my back. And I know two of those I couldn't remember exactly the the amount of pounds it is, but it'll it'll start weighing you down pretty quick, which is another reason why strong legs are the best tool you can have in a gunfight. Because if you don't have the cardio and that kind of motor in yet, so these guys all the way up, all the way down an oil rig, and then uh, conducted pretty much the same mission on a cargo ship. Those a little uh, ways away. These guys didn't cover 20 miles of ground in a day like you could in other scenarios, but uh, just the explosiveness of getting up and down stairs, you know, pieing corners, being quick when you need to, slowing down when you need to. It's a lot on your body. The conditioning that it requires to carry enough ammo to get around is a, a huge thing. And it's something that uh, the military at large doesn't really take lightly. You know, I was always prepared in either training exercises or whatever else to be able to be confident in myself that I can carry however many belts of 762 by 51 uh, in my pack. You're at least going to have about six mags on you if you're carrying an AR-15 platform. So once you get over those like, you know, seven, eight mags, that, that fighting load, you go into what's known as a sustainment load. Sustainment load typically you're going to carry on you if you're going out on some sort of a reconnaissance mission not typically vbss but you know if you're in a mountain range and i've got a lot of distance to cover in maybe a, over the time span of a few days i'm going to want to have that sustainment load on me because i could get in one firefight i could get in four or five and i want to be confident that i can pump that amount of ammo the distance that it takes to complete the mission and also not run out uh, because that's you know obviously the worst case scenario for you there is think about black hawk down and it wasn't the exact scenario but when the guy didn't want to wear a uh, back sappy plate he's like i'm not gonna be turning around we're only gonna be out there for a little bit you gotta think how did that turn out for him that kind of scenario happens so you want to be prepared and as lame as it sounds and i'm going to know the e4 mafia is going to come at me for this but you know pack everything on the gear list because you're probably going to need it it seems pretty apparent that this door is going to open out towards him but the breacher in me is saying maybe there's something better or just a better location to plant those explosives because if i've got a door that's gonna open up towards me. I don't wanna try to breach the handle, just knock out the handle because the, the hinges are gonna be open in the opposite way and I don't know exactly where that door is locked. So if I poke a hole through the handle of the door, okay, but where are the, the locks? You know, like where are the pins or, or bars or what have you? It seems like this door has two handles. I would at least need to, uh, to let go of the hinges on it using something like flex linear uh it looks like they're using some c4 on here you could also use that maybe not where i would put the breaching charge there but let's see how it works out for yeah think about how that worked uh oh god god 
<laughs> couldn't, have, couldn't have worked out much better. Now I need the last digit on row two, column one. Row two, column one. Is it C? Or is column one L? Zero. No, I think it's C. Negative. Row two, column one. Check again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's C. It's C. Charlie. Perfecto. It's headed for yeah. New Orleans. God. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> just like, just another day on the job, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> couldn't imagine. Realistic score, I'd give you maybe a 3 out of 10. Like a fun score, this looks like an absolute ball, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Check out Gameology's Facebook and YouTube channels. My Instagram is at shooter.dad. Remember to stay mentally, spiritually, and physically prepared. I'll see you next time.